So in the previous video, I went out and grabbed some data from the Wikipedia, made a little comma separated file of the data that I need for my state capitals. And now I need to load it into Scratch. So I'm going to make my two lists. I'm going to make a list of all of the states. And I'm going to make a list of all of the capitals. And now we want to load these in. And so if I right click on state, remember that I can import data. And I'm going to choose this CSV file that I looked at in the previous section. And now because this is a CSV file with lots of columns in it, it wants me to know which column am I most interested in. And since I'm loading the states right now, remember that the states happen to be column 1 in my CSV file. So I'll say, yes, I want to import column 1. And I get Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California. California, and so on. And I want to load in my capitals. So I want to import that from the state capitals. And this says, well, what column were the capitals in? The column capitals were in column number four in my list. So I say, I want column four. And we import the state capitals that way. And this works really well as long as, and this is an incredible hack, you want to make sure that the last column is not a column that you're using. It turns out that the new line characters at the end of the rows cause some problems. So as long as you're pulling from a column that's not the last column, this will work really well. All right, so I have capitals, and I have states, and we're ready to go. Right. Now I want my cat to randomly pick a state and ask me about that, right? And so I really want to go in and have the cat basically say to me, you know, what is the capital of, and then the of should be some random state picked from the state list. You might at first think that the way to do that is to use this item command that we looked at previously this module and use the random feature, right? Pick some random state. And so I might ask, have the cat ask me, What is the capital of, and then I pick some random state out of the state list. And that, that will, will almost work, right? I mean, if I click it now, it'll say, what's the capital of Pennsylvania? And every time I click on this, I'm randomly picking a new state. The problem is that in the next step, I want to be able to compare my answer to the right answer. And so I need to know which item did I pick? You know, if Delaware is maybe the eighth state in my list. Then I also need to know, well, what's the eighth capital? And so I can't just use this random number generator in this way. Instead, what I'm going to have to do is use exactly what I used in my previous example, uh, where I was looking at the, the kitchen song. I want to have a slot number. Right? And I need to be able to then grab a slot number. So when the, when the green flag is pressed, I want to set slot number to some random number. And the random number should be one of the states in my list. I could go in here and say from 1 to 50, because I happen to know there are 50 uh, states in my state list. Right? I mean, that sh there should be. There are 50 states here in the United States. Uh, sorry, those of you from Puerto Rico, you guys didn't make this list. Uh, I know that's uh, potentially a sore spot. But so we want to take the slot number from 1 to 50. And I could do this. But the problem is, suppose that Puerto Rico becomes a state, and we add it in. right? It becomes the 51st item in my list. Well, now the problem is I'm still only gathering from 1 to 50. And so the way that I can, can make this dynamic, and I can say, actually use what information you have available to you, is I can use this block that says, look at the length of, and it wouldn't matter whether I'm looking at state or capital. They should be the same. I want to pick a number from 1 to the length of state, which I mean, we just looked at that. That's currently 50, right? And so this is going to pick a number from 1 to 50. And then I want to ask about that slot number. So I don't want to use a random number. I want to grab whatever slot number they gave, they picked, grab that. So here, we'll run it. Slot number 9 is Florida. What's the capital of Florida? Slot number 15 is Iowa. What's the capital of Iowa? And so on. And so we want to ask that question. All right, great. Now what we need to finally do then is check my answer. So this asks, what's the capital of Iowa? And I say Des Moines. And I get, you know, and right now nothing happens because all it does is ask and it doesn't check. I want to check whether or not they gave me the right answer. And so this is a two-way selection statement. I want to know whether or not they gave me the right answer. And so what I want to know is, is the answer that they gave me the right answer? So I want to know, does the answer that they gave me 
equal, well, I mean, here we were looking at the slot number of the state. My answer, though, is going to be a capital. So I want to know, does the answer that they gave me, is it the same as that slot number in the capital list? Right? And so I can say, if it is, then I want to say, great job. And if it's not, then we ought to you know, make some kind of nice error message. And so uh, let's see here. Let's do the join and say, sorry, the correct answer is, I'm running out of room here, so let's move this over. And, and let's just duplicate this, right? The correct answer is whatever is the right answer. So if I put in that the capital of Iowa is Cedar Falls, which it's not, it'll say, sorry, the correct answer is, and it'll go back to the capital list and say, hey, slot number 15 in the capital list is Des Moines, and it will give me the right answer. And we should be good to go with this. Let me save it, and let's try it. What is the capital of New Mexico? Uh, that is Santa Fe. This is great job. Okay, and I can run it again. What's the capital of California? Let's get it wrong on purpose. Let's say Los Angeles, and it tells me, sorry, the answer is Sacramento. There we go. Um, we could do some more incremental development here. We could attempt to build this up and, and allow this to maybe ask this multiple times, right? Put in a loop that says, let's ask for 10 quizzes. Maybe add in the idea of a score, right? Where the score is going to be zero at the start of the game. And every time you get it right, we want to change score by one. And this way, as we run through this now, we can see what's the capital of Georgia. Uh, is that Augusta? No, I don't think it is. No, it's Atlanta, right? So I don't get a point. What's the capital of Massachusetts? Boy, I can't type today. Boston, great job. And I get a point, right? And so we, this would now ask me 10 states randomly. And it's possible that I'm going to get the same state again while I'm taking the quiz, but it's going to build up my score. And there's a really powerful way that we can use lists that you could use lists in your own classroom to develop quizzes that you use with your students. And all it takes is a comma separated value of files, uh, a comma separated value file with all the data that you need. So we're going to stop this video now. In the next video, we'll start to wrap up this module and wrap up this course.